Okay. That was, uh, that was certainly a thing you can do uh, as a follow-up to a really good episode. You can, uh, I do this. Uh, <laughs> hi, everybody. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush Episode 7 is strange on many levels. And not the fun strange. <laughs> Some of it was fun, uh, but this is kind of where reviewing a show like Yu-Gi-Oh! can get a little complicated. Yu-Gi-Oh! and I think I've done a pretty good job of hinting at this over the years, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not really what I would call a stable anime. What I mean by that is you have anime that are ran by creators, that are ran by auteurs, directors, whatever phrase you want to use, and that is what makes the anime it is. It is ran by an idea for creating art. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have anime that is made essentially by a boardroom, uh, people running calculations and going based on charts to sell a product. Essentially, these are two sides of the same coin because both lead to a cohesive finished product. Yu-Gi-Oh! on the other hand... <laughs> has never really been any of these things in their entirety. The thing is, is that Yu-Gi-Oh! should, in theory, be a franchise that only exists to sell merchandise. That's what it's here for. It's here to sell a trading card game. That is the direction this franchise has taken and its ultimate motivation. So you assume it would have that kind of, like, cold, calculated nature that leads to similar product-based shows like your Shadow Versus, uh, your Black Clovers, things that just feel like they were basically just shat out by marketing departments. Also, I know the Black Clover manga gets good, and I know there's a new Shadow Verse series. I'm not watching it. I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so, but Yu-Gi-Oh has always had this weird thing where it's written by people who seem to get really into and passionate about the idea of what they can do with it. So because of this, Yu-Gi-Oh lives in this weird limbo where you end up with 22 minutes of television like this, where there's so much weird outlandish stuff going on, you kind of want to enjoy it, but there's also so much just clear studio shit going on that you can't not notice it. So, this overly long introduction is based on the concept of I have no idea what the fuck to talk about or how to phrase this. So, we're just kind of going to spitfall for the next seven minutes and see where it gets us. So, this episode opens with, once again, Udius using his laser vision to blow something up. But it was better this time. Because unlike the last time, it had a sense of purpose to it. Udius wanted to get to a bookstore that was now closed so that way he could get like a audio CD or something that probably came with a magazine to help him home his rush duel skills. So there was a reason to laser a door down. Uh, I like that he gave her the money. It wasn't that joke about an alien not understanding money. Uh, and, but what was most important was that at the end of the gag, he lasers the out, outer of the rim of the door again and then picks the door up with his sword so that way it'll like melt back into place and be fixed. That's evolving that idea. That's actually clever. That's a lot more creative than what we've seen thus far. So I'm weirdly okay with that despite kind of not wanting to be because it's just a, another dumb weird joke. Um, so then we go on to the next bit of the episode which is Udius is using this CD to study very hard for rush duels, and this kind of goes back to the point I was making because one of the things that annoys me about things like, I'm just saying it just because the easiest to remember because I keep getting ads for it, the new Shadowverse or like Cardfight Vanguard G with Chrono or various other card game anime franchises and just like toy commercial shows in general is that the character has no identity or personality outside of liking that thing. And my problem with Udius so far has been all he talks about is liking rush duels, so this feels like more of that. Also, remembering there's 24 types of monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! makes me realize how overly fucking convoluted this game gets. But yeah, no, so... But then this is where it kind of gets fixed. <laughs> because then in the morning, when he's talking to the other two, 
uh, we find out that the reason he's now so much more insistent and aggressive and probably in turn was always so aggressive about learning about rush duels was so that way he can use it to further his own goal and his ideal. And that being that he believes he can use dueling, specifically rush dueling, because that's what the show is trying to sell, uh, to use that to bring peace to his section of the galaxy. And our antagonist, someone he trusted and cared about, wants to do the opposite. So that is giving the depth and identity the subplot of him wanting to learn Rush Duel's needs. Just the way it's presented is really weird. <laughs> um, it's not like with Yuga and his goals or any of the other protagonists, really. Uh, but yeah, no. So then the next shtick is... Um, I The other thing I really liked with this episode is... Uh, this was the first episode where I felt like really relied on the character chemistry and I thought it actually worked out really fucking well. I really liked the bit where Udius is trying to get Yuhi to help him learn. Yuhi doesn't really want to do it. Uh, Yuamu is kind of like predicting why he doesn't want to do it and his responses, which is perfectly synced with how he's phrasing it versus how Udius is saying. This was a really well-directed scene for just the actors. And remember, if I'm correct, Yuhi's actor is a kid and he's doing a very good job keeping up with everything. And I think like the way they use the visuals is really fun. There's not a lot of animation in this episode, which we'll get back to in a minute but what there is they use effectively and intelligently it's not incompetent it's well made it's just sort of like weird <laughs> in its own way so yeah so then we get what i also liked we spend time with the guy from sevens um and we learn a little about his hobbies i like that we get that explanation of like how he's always kind of cared for our, these kids and, but that feels like how he would do it and the way the actor does it is all very right and feels fitting despite just being more exposition. Uh, but then we see like just kind of an insight into what he likes. He likes to farm. He likes bonsais. I like just seeing Udius and Uamu just kind of hanging out for a few minutes. We haven't really gotten that this much in this Yu-Gi-Oh! like we did in the last one. And just another minute or two of it, just like such a small chunk of the episode kind of reminds you what these writers strengths are and it's clearly not plot uh but yeah no so then yuhi busts out his new invention a souped up tractor that is programmed to force Udius to ride at it till he answers a hundred rush duel questions this is so fucking stupid but so weirdly kind of funny i don't know what to think i'm just sitting there watching this being like okay i guess all right yuamu uh yuamu's reaction was really funny um but then we kind of get this problem of there's very little movement going on there you can count the frames of animation the sky changes and they blink so often than not they're just so blank and lifeless again remember what i was saying what i loved about sevens how kind of lively they kept it uh, but yeah, no, and so then, uh, naturally, because you need the episode to go somewhere, the tractor loses control, they run into rival dude and the talking cat, and again, they're funny in this, they're entertaining, he bounces off with Udius really well, but again, Udius isn't fucking moving, there's no animation, even the gag where they were getting shocked was funny until I realized it was just the same shot mirrored. Uh, but yeah, and so then naturally it just kind of turns into what the episode said it was. Udias has to answer all these questions about rush duels. There's too many recap clips for me to think that that wasn't just a stylistic choice and they were trying to save money. Again, being reminded of budget and all these like things you don't want to remember while you're watching a show. And then it just kind of ends. And I thought the final bit was funny and the, the, the bit with the par with the bird and they almost fell off the cliff and then the ship saved him was, was fine. It was just kind of like, it's such a weird just juxtaposition from last week, which felt very well balanced and very well executed. So now you just have this, which is just kind of all over the place. And it just kind of left me, I'm not annoyed, but I don't know how to feel been a long day i'm tired let's just move on to the tcg question of the week <laughs> all right so this week uh because it's all anyone wants to talk about 
Uh, what are your early ban list predictions and hopes? Mine are pretty self-explanatory. I don't know what else you're supposed to think at this point. Scythe has to go. Uh, I think Verte is done because they got because it got the reprint, so it doesn't really matter. They might give us another Pendulum thing back because Beyond the Pendulum just came out. Uh, and if I were to pick my wild card, just because I feel like no one's predicting this, I'm going to say that I think Halk is a goner. Because it just got its reprint and it's not hard to pull. So I feel like Konami just doesn't care about it anymore and therefore doesn't feel the need to keep it around. So that's just my thoughts. Uh, give me your thoughts about that in the comments section below. And as always, click the like, click the subscribe, and join me next week where let's see if uh, we feel a little more focused.